My prediction for my outlook prior to everything happening, and this was at the end of last year, was 2,200 to 2,300. Yes. I think that throughout this year, it's still possible once rate cuts begin. If they occur early, we could see that tested. We need to retest, obviously, the all-time record highs just above 2,100. But if the Federal Reserve is more aggressive in rate cuts, in other words, we're focusing on the timing. But if we look back to the dot plot that was released in December of last year, they were looking for three quarters of a percent in terms of cuts this year, and then continued cuts throughout 25 and 26, taking or normalizing interest rates somewhere around three to three and a half percent. That is the incentive that's going to move gold higher if, in fact, it does break back above 2100. According to analysts, Fed policy will continue to be crucial to the future of gold prices in the coming months. The macro environment surrounding the yellow metal should improve if the Fed continues to sound less hawkish, and the story around the rate outlook has shifted from this year. Markets now expect 125 basis points of rate cuts through 2024, following the Fed's most aggressive rate hiking campaign in 40 years, with a widespread belief that the cycle of rate hikes has peaked. As gold prices hold steady in a wait-and-see mode, traders are closely dissecting the FOMC Monetary Policy Meeting Minutes, released on Wednesday, for insights into the next significant move in precious metals. Gary Wagner, editor of thegoldforecast.com, envisions a potential gold price surge to $2,300, expressing confidence in this feasibility especially if the Federal Reserve implements early rate cuts. Notably, Wagner points out that $2,000 per ounce is now perceived as a substantial support level, no longer a resistance, as observed in the months preceding the October rally. While reaffirming gold's enduring relevance in global scenarios, Wagner emphasizes its dual role as an inflation hedge and a safe haven during geopolitical tensions. The recent uptick in gold prices may be attributed to mounting concerns over inflation and geopolitical uncertainties adding weight to gold status as a go-to asset in uncertain times. In contrast to conventional views, gold and silver have shown as bright spots over the past 18 months. In recent months, investors have turned to safe haven assets like gold and silver for reassurance against market volatility, introduced by inflation and geopolitical uncertainties globally. The strong performance of gold and silver aligns with the broader trend of increasing reliance on precious metals in times of economic uncertainty. Now, we present the clips of Gary Wagner's insights from his recent interview with David Lynn. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. The key that I like to say when we look at gold in terms of a hedge against inflation is the buying power of gold has remained consistent really for the last hundred years plus. What you could do with an ounce of gold and a in terms of purchasing power has not changed dramatically, but the dollar has. And there's a ton of examples, but the fact of the matter is that it, it, it does have a correlation between, excuse me, there is a correlation between the buying power of gold and how that reacts over time. So it is a hedge against inflation. Secondly, it continues and will always be a safe haven asset in times of uh, geopolitical tension. And we're definitely seeing that in different parts of the world. And that hasn't changed. This is actually spot gold. And what we're looking at is from the lows in October that came in, uh, you know, just above 1800 an ounce up to the record high which if you didn't look hard, you, if you blinked, you missed it because it hit a high on Friday and then by Sunday had not only taken away the 2100 plus high, but moved to a ridiculous low of around uh, 2024, a huge move over the weekend. At that point, we had a series of higher lows and lower highs. So that's why you see on this chart, these two lines support and then resistance up here and you can see the series of lower highs and higher lows now typically in a compression triangle it will break to the prevalent trend direction which in this case would have been up but it did not it actually broke to the downside 
That's this large red candle here. We then followed that by a doji candle that came in on the 14th. And now we've had four consecutive days of green candles, meaning higher highs, higher lows, higher closes, which has been a really, really strong reevaluation of the market and recovery in gold since that fall. So that's what we're seeing in this chart. Are you, are you surprised at all that gold has not um, broken down significantly given, given how strong the equity markets have performed over the last, well, since the beginning of the year? Well, I'm not that surprised that it's held up well because the likelihood of more geopolitical tension uh, re-emerging, so to speak, is pretty high. Both wars are still going on in the Middle East and Russia and Ukraine, of course. It's They go into the new cycle and out of the new cycle. Right now, they're out of the new cycle. And so the fact is that they still are highly supportive. Whether or not the news is talking about it, traders are aware that it's a tinderbox. And at any moment, things could change dramatically. And that's why I believe gold has held up so well. Definitely look at um, $2,000 as a floor in which one of the slats was broken in and kind of somebody fell through, but that it quickly went back. In other words, the <laughs> recent, well, the recent dip took it to a low of about 1980, but now it's, it's sitting well above that at what, uh, 2020, 2030. So, I believe major support continues to be $2,000 per ounce rather than resistance as it was months ago prior to the October rally. Gary Wagner foresees gold facing resistance between $2,000 and $2,100 per ounce, but maintains an optimistic outlook, expecting an upward trend contingent on controlled inflation. Research conducted by the World Gold Council spanning half a century backs this. During instances where inflation surpassed 3%, gold prices enjoyed an average annual return of 15%. This contrasts sharply with its 6% average return during periods of lower inflation, below 3%. This showcases the tendency of gold to outperform when inflationary pressures intensify. Diversifying our investment portfolio with gold can provide greater stability and even reduce volatility. Wagner notes a recent dollar peak on February 13th, followed by a five-day decline, indicating continued weakness. Furthermore. He believes this influences gold positively, evidenced by four consecutive higher closes. The dollar index was down 0.1%, making greenback-priced bullion less expensive for buyers holding other currencies. Gold ticked higher on Tuesday as the U.S. dollar pulled back, with investors keenly awaiting the last U.S. Federal Reserve policy meeting minutes to gauge the timing of interest rate cuts. Let's get back to the interview. I think that that's going to be contingent on how the fundamentals play out, specifically inflation. Okay. If it continues to contract and actually exceeds expectations, that would entice the Fed to maybe cut rates in May rather than, than June. I think that we could see a higher movement. We know where the ceiling is, and that's the high that was made in terms of the date. Uh, back in November, beginning of December, above $2,100 per ounce. That's the brass ring, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see that resistance getting played out easily. But between 2000 and, and just above 2100 is the range I think it's going to continue to play in with the bias to the upside if inflation doesn't go wildly out of hand, which I don't think it will. I think that uh, in terms of probabilities, that is unlikely. We, we've seen it retrace down to the low 1800s pre the October rally. So that to me is the lower end of the range. If we broke below, uh, say 2000, and we had a sharp correction, I don't see it moving below 1800. And so we've been there a few months ago. I don't see a correction back to 1600, which is what occurred. I've really compressed this chart. But if we look at October uh, 2022, we had these lows come in around 1600. I don't think the probability is high of that happening again. But we just recently 
retraced to uh, just above 1800 and then recovered very quickly back from October to current pricing. 07 that began uh, October 2023 to again October 23 and then it dropped just to about 100 and that's where the floor came in. So if we look at where the dollar has gone from let's say uh, December up until it peaked, which was very recent, it hit a high uh, February 13th, I believe. And then we've seen it cycle down for the last five consecutive days. This is a daily chart. So continued dollar weakness is obviously going to have a strong bullish influence on gold prices. And we've seen that. We've seen four consecutive higher closes in gold. We've seen five, not consecutive, but five days of the dollar trending lower. So we're getting the type of correlation we typically look for, which is dollar weakness leads to gold strength. Regarding the potential for a correction below 2000, he is confident that the price will unlikely fall below 1800. JP Morgan highlighted in its 2024 commodities outlook that the only structural bullish call they held across commodities was on gold and silver. Considering the evolving relationship between Fed policies and gold prices, how do you foresee it impacting your investment strategy? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.